Hello and welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays. So this past weekend I bought a new car which puts me in a very good mood and also gave me a cool idea for a tutorial. So today we are going to be modeling and texturing a tire. We're going to focus purely on the rubber part just because there is enough detail in there to fill up an entire tutorial but it still should be pretty informative for how to properly or in my opinion uh, my way of modeling tread for the tires and then we can also make it dirty and look cool so let's go ahead and get started um, as you'll notice I have the screencast keys on right here so as I hit stuff the keys will pop up and you can pay attention to what I'm doing so um, we're gonna start out by adding a torus like so which gives us a nice donut shape to start out with and then we are going to go into edit mode select all of these rings and not that one. Ah. Oh, okay, we're just going to select these rings right here and delete vertices. So now we have the outside of our tire. Then you'll notice that tires have a large flat portion before they go into the curved portion. So to get that, what we're going to do is delete the lower half of the faces. So, like that. Then we're going to go into Edit uh, Modifier Panel and we're going to add a Mirror Modifier. And rather than doing it on the x-axis, we're going to do it on the z-axis. So then we're going to move this up. And we can also modify our tire shape by scaling these vertices. Then we're going to turn on clipping. Alt select this ring. Alt, holding alt while selecting an edge will select the entire loop, if you did not know that. Then we're going to hit E to extrude, Z to go on the Z axis, and go all the way down to the center. And since we have clipping on right here, we can't go past the center, which is very useful. So there we have a very thick tire. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit more naturally sized. And we're going to sort of... Um, I guess sort of uh, make this a bit tighter right here. We can add some edge loops to sort of round it out a bit more. And that will be pretty good. So that gives us our tire model. However, if you look at tires, I think I might have some reference for this. Uh, it's hard to tell right here, but this part of the tire is generally scaled in a good bit more, maybe to about right there. Then we can take that and extrude it inwards just a little bit like so. And then we can take this edge and hit Control B to bevel. And that gives us a nice round area. Then I think we also want to go ahead and take this and make it a little bit concave. Uh, so going in, I guess that would make the entire overall shape convex, but whatever. Then we'll make this a little bit rounder and that gives us our tire model. So. To model the tread on the tire, I prefer, per, I typically like to use the displacement modifier using a texture because it's very convenient. Um, it allows you to have low resolution in the viewport, high resolution on render. But to do that, I added an extra edge loop just to keep the edges about uniform. And then what we're going to do is apply our modifier like so. So now this ring in the center is connected. So we're going to come over here and go into the UV image editor and we're going to hit U unwrap. And that gives us an awful unwrap of our tire like so. So what we're going to do next is select an edge loop here, hit control E and mark seam. So now we have a seam right there and we can select everything by hitting A, uh, U to unwrap it again. And now we have this terrible mess. We can check out conformal and angle base to choose which one we like better. I think angle base suits our needs a bit better. Then we are going to hit W and align Y. And we're going to do this on every edge on the tire so we get a nice aligned UV pattern. Or UV map I guess is the proper term there. So I'm just going to keep doing this. It will get a little bit boring maybe but I'm going as fast as I can if you go into a menu like this it remembers your last command so you can just hit W and click and do it pretty quickly um, I just have to find the edges that are overlapping here and there we go all aligned on the Y so now we need to do the exact same thing for the X because we want a nice I guess you'd call it a cylinder map um, for the tire, you might be able to get away with doing cylindrical projection, but it'll still be distorted just because of the 
nature of our model. So we're just going to do it this way, which is nice and convenient. And it doesn't take too much time, just a little bit of time here to align these edges. But that is the price of good UVs, the tedium. Ah, I almost aligned that vertical, that horizontal edge loop on the x-axis, which would have been bad news. Almost there. Almost there. This is just a little bit tedious. This is a heck of a lot faster tool than what I used to do, which was scaling on the x-axis to zero for every edge loop, which was three keystrokes as opposed to selecting and then just hitting one keystroke. So we can take this entire thing, rotate it, hold control to snap it to angle increments. Then we're just going to move it up here and scale the entire thing until it matches the edges. And one way you can do that is you can go to UVs and you can say, I know it's around here somewhere, <laughs> constrain to image bounds. So then if we scale it up, it will constrain it to the image bounds and will not go past. Um, of course, up here, it's already constraining to the bottom image bounds. So we have to move this until we get something that just about works. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's a tire who's going to be looking at it in scrutinous detail. Okay, so this gives us some nice UVs for our tire. We can check those out by going to make a new image. And we can say UV grid. And let's just go with the default 1024, 1024 to test our texture out. So since we're still in Blender Render, we can hit Alt-Z to go into texture mode. Huh, it's lighting it in texture mode. That's a little bit interesting. Or we can come over here to display and go to shading. Okay, shading and go to textured solid. So you'll notice that these are a little bit stretched. So we can take our UVs and scale them on the X axis until they're more square, like so. And that gives us pretty decent UVs. I'm satisfied. So let's go ahead and get started with the texturing progress. So for my personal choice of application, I tend to like to use Photoshop. So we're going to use that for this particular example. So to do that, we're going to go into edit mode, select all of our edges, come over here, select everything and say UVs export UV layout. I'm going to make a new folder under our directory and call it textures. And then I'm going to name this tire underscore UVs. It's good to be organized, everybody. And we'll make this 4096 by 4096, which is double 2048. And I'm doing that just so we have really good resolution for our tire tread. Fill opacity might be 0.15 or 0.25 by default. I always put it at zero. So we can go ahead and say export UV layout. And that will take a little bit to make the 4096 image. And then we can open up our Windows Explorer or Mac Explorer or whatever you call it on Linux. I don't really know. Go into Photoshop. Uh, drag our image into Photoshop like so. It'll take a little bit of time, a little bit longer for me just because the recorder, the, camp, the screen recorder is um, going. And then we can take this and make a new layer. Whatever image application you're using, GIMP, Photoshop, whatever, you can create layers and fill it in. I'm just going to show you how I would texture it and then you all can handle it yourself. So I'm going to see which edges these are on our thing um, and it looks like we really just want to focus up until this edge right here for the tread um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our reference again which looks like this and I'm gonna go ahead and point out that there are tons of different tread patterns on tires so we can just make something up that looks close and everybody will be happy with our tire I don't think anybody's going to look at it and say, tires don't look like that. So let's go ahead and, okay, so we probably want to go out to about this edge right here. So let's go to Photoshop, go out to the first small edge, and what we're going to do is create a brush stroke. In Photoshop specifically, you can um, hold shift to draw straight lines. I don't know why my computer is running so slow. That's a bit strange. Oh, I was just making sure this is recording still. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a line that is maybe five pixels. Maybe that's a little bit small. 
maybe 10 pixels, let's double it up and turn the hardness down to 85%. And again, this is just Photoshop. You all can do the exact same things in GIMP, although I'm not sure how because I never learned how to use GIMP. So I'm going to just draw a straight line like so. And then I'm going to, ah, I drew it on this layer. You wanna make that line on a new layer so we can move it around freely. So now we have this straight line like so and we can move it to the center. So on tires, you'll notice that a lot of them have this pattern where they have one, two, three, four lines, and then maybe one small one down the center, but four blocks of tread basically, or four lines between tread. So we're gonna stick to that. And we're also going to go ahead and make our background a mid gray as opposed to a white. So I'm going to come into Photoshop and change the B value or, or value to 50% and make the background 50%. Oh my gosh, my computer is running so slowly. This is crazy. Um, let's take a look at the performance here. Um, it's not too bad. Interesting. So then we're going to take our line and we are going to get really close up just because we don't need to be so far out. Um, and we wanted to come out to... Okay, so it looks like we'll create the first one here. We'll duplicate it, move it over to get about even on the other side, maybe a little bit further in. Again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, um, but it does need to be pretty decent. So then we can duplicate that and move it out to right here. Then we can duplicate that and move it out to right here. And that will do us pretty well. And we can already go ahead and test what this is starting to look like in Blender. So we can turn off our wireframe and Control Shift S to save as. I'm gonna save it as a JPEG just because it's low file size. It's not necessarily the highest quality option. P and G or TIFF are pretty good too. But I'm gonna go with JPEG just to save on file size. And we can make this, we can call this tire underscore disp for displacement and save it as a JPEG. And maximum quality, of course, because we want a maximum quality tire. Then what we're going to do is come into the modifiers and add a displacement modifier. We're gonna create a new texture by clicking this button, and by default, they will add a noise texture. Then we also want to say, rather than local, we want to use UV coordinates for our texture, and this is totally looking like a tire, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> I wouldn't either. So what we're going to do is create an image or a movie and say open. We're gonna to go to textures and say tire displacement and that will use our tire displacement as our displacement. But right now our wireframe is pretty low resolution. So before our displacement texture, we're going to add a subdivision surface and hit this arrow to move it up. And we can just up the subdivisions like so until it looks pretty good. So four seems pretty good good as far as subdivisions go. I mean, look how high resolution our tire is now. And then we can change the strength down quite a bit. We can put it at maybe 0.1, probably even way less, like 0 0.05. And that is starting to look pretty cool. Um, so if we give this a quick test render, we're starting to get our tire, as you can clearly see. I think we have room to move this out a little bit more, though. So what we're going to do is figure out which line is which. I probably should have named these. Okay, I have an idea. We're going to put outer on the outside, top and bottom. So outer, middle, middle, outer. So we can move these over a little bit, I think. Then we can also take each of these and scale them down to probably about 70% uh, on the width axis, maybe 75. We just want our tread to be a little bit thinner as we noticed in Blender. So control T, width 75%, enter. Control T, width 75%, enter. Control T, with 75% enter. Okay, so that gives us a very good start to our tread. So what we're also gonna do is go ahead and create that small center line that just goes right down the center. So I'm gonna duplicate one of these, put it in the middle of all these layers so we can tell which one is which, 
and we're just going to move it right to the center. Then we're going to hit Control T and make this one half as wide as all the other ones. And that should look pretty decent. So then for our tread, I like the pattern of having diagonal lines going that way and that way. So let's go ahead and do something like that. And how we do that is make, use our brush and we can now um, use the brackets on our keyboard to make the brush bigger or smaller. We want it a little bit smaller than our tread just so we don't get any overlap. Then we can create a, go to a new layer. We'll call, we'll put these in a group and call them center lines. And then I'm going to just create some lines above here for the tread, like so. And that should be pretty decent for a diagonal. Maybe a little bit steeper, I think. So I'm gonna hit Control T and rotate this just a little bit, like so. Um, I'd rather just restart on that line though. So let's go from here to maybe here should be pretty good. So then we'll take this line and hit Control J. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, five, six, five, six, five. I'm gonna go with five. Um, actually, this is pretty good. If we use a rule guide right here, we can see there's a little bit of space between this end and this end, which will make it really easy to make our texture tileable. So there will be no seams on our tire. So we're just going to hit Control J, one, two, three, four, five. Control J, one, two, three, four, five. And we can then eventually um, take this. Uh, merge these layers, control J, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And we can just keep doing that. Control J, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And eventually we will have nice tread that goes all the way up our tire. This is gonna take a little bit long, so rather than wasting your time, I'm just going to do this the fast way, which is not completely accurate, but it'll look pretty decent in the long run. So Control J, drag down. Uh, it looks like it's snapping to match these up. So something about like that, or it's matching at the bounds of each previous one, which is also pretty good. So just like that, we are almost done with our tread. So Control J, by the way, in Photoshop duplicates a layer, which is a really good hot key to know. And then we can just take our tire tread and merge it and move it down until we're right at the edge like that, because you want this to be tileable. So. That looks pretty good actually. Um, I think we can take this entire thing and scale it down just a little bit, slightest bit, like so. And that will give us some pretty good tread. Then we can hit Control J, move it over here, Control T, and make the width minus 100 to flip it. You can also go to um, Image Transfer. Maybe it's under Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal also works if you choose to go into the menus. And then we are just going to move this guy over until he matches up with this tread. Which this tread is not as thick as the other tread, which is no good news. So we can then come over here, and I believe it is going to be this guy right here. We can just move him over until he is now thick enough. Then we can take this guy, center him back up, and then we can take the entirety of our tread and center it on the center line, which these lines don't appear to match up on either side, so I'm just gonna move this back and hope that it all works out, which I think it'll work out just fine. So we're gonna take this and put it under a new group and call it tread marks. Then we're going to put this under a, we're going to take all of these and put them under a new group and call it displacement. What I like to do is create all of my textures in one Photoshop document. So I'm going to save this for instance as tire underscore textures. So then we can create color, bump, everything under one Photoshop document. As you can notice, there is a little bit of overlap on the tread right here. So what we're going to do to fix that is just zoom in on it, select it, 
and move it over until it no longer protrudes. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and see what this is looking like. I'm gonna hit Control Shift S, JPEG, overwrite this guy right here. And wait, because my computer's going slow right now. Slowly, adverb. And then we can take our texture and we can hit the reload button, which will reload our texture to give us some nice tire tread. You notice this is still pretty low resolution, which is totally acceptable because what we can do is come over here and say in render we want it to go up to six. So now if we were to render this, our subdivisions would be super high. Let's go ahead and test that. Do, 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 rendering, it is rendering our image. I need to stop singing. This isn't really singing. Uh, it takes a while to synchronize the objects right here because it's creating all of those subdivisions to create the tread. This is a little bit less inefficient on the processor than just modeling tread in general, but it saves a hell of a lot of time and it makes it really easy to add dust and dirt and all sorts of buildup within the tire tread. So it's building our BVH right now. I can't do this one on the GPU, sorry guys, because the mesh is just too dense. We probably could have gotten away with five subdivisions, but you'll notice that this looks pretty cool. It'll especially look cool from a distance. So then it looks like we just need to add some marks to the outside that are going to fade out. And let's go ahead and do that by creating a new layer. We'll turn this back on. And it looks like this connects to this line right here. So one, two, three, four. Um, so we can just create some alternating lines. We can actually just take our tread marks, drag them down to the new layer icon and move them up here. So we can then take this and move it out like so. I actually wanna move this to the opposite side so it is the opposite kind of tread, which is totally cool. Like so. And we can do the same thing with this tread right here. Just move it over until it matches up. Like so. So again, you all can do this texturing stuff in whatever texture application you damn well please to do it in, but I'm choosing to do it in Photoshop. So then I'm gonna take a brush stroke and we're gonna do this on this layer three that we created. And we're going to use our 50% gray and just create a line with a hardness of zero. Move it down all the way. That should have drawn our line. So we're going to move it over left until it sort of matches up with our tread. And this way we can make our tread fade out as it goes over here, as it would on a real tire. It would go until it matches up with the edge, which is totally cool. We'll hit Control J and drag this over and just make it look about the same. Doesn't have to be completely accurate. Again, you're doing textures, you're not doing heart surgery. So we'll go ahead and save this as a JPEG and test it out. And come back to Blender and we will come back over here to our textures and hit reload. And that gives us our tread that goes out. And that gives us a pretty decent looking tire displacement map, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm using displacement also because in the industry, there are different rendering engines like Mental Ray and Arnold and V-Ray, and they do everything through displacement um, except for fine bump detail. Any big stuff like Tread, where you would need to see the actual silhouette, they use displacement. They don't model it, um, they, they texture it, and these rendering engines handle displacement exceptionally well. Brett is currently, I believe there's an experimental feature in cycles for displacement upon render or true displacement, but I choose to just use the modifier because it gives us really good visualization in the viewport. But as you can see, this tread will start here and then fade out as it goes towards the edge. And I th think we can probably go to about this edge actually. So let's turn on our UVs that stay on no matter what and select these edges. And it looks like we want to go to the edge right before the small face. So we can select our entire displacement map, turn on our wireframe, 
and we can take this or select everything except the gray and that will make our life easier and we can hold down alt before we scale it and that will scale it like so and we can just scale out our tread to make it go further hit enter and let's test that I am big on the whole testing thing so I'm gonna save it as a JPEG yet again and again I'd probably be blacklisted if people knew I was just using JPEGs for textures but it's a 4096 by 4096 and it, it saves a lot on space so kill me or sue me don't kill me I prefer to stay alive okay so now that looks like a pretty cool tire tread and you can add more detail to your tire tread you can add all sorts of cool squigglies or whatever you want to do with your tire tread but I'm gonna call it quits right there for this tire tread and let's go ahead and get into some mad texturing so I'm gonna turn the subsurf down to two um, so you'll still see a little bit of displacement but nothing fancy but on the bright side it will render a hell of a lot faster so we're going to create a plane for this to sit on which looks pretty cool and then we are going to create a mesh light so create a plane move it up move it over move it over we can rotate it until we think it'll look pretty cool and we can add an emission texture and set that to maybe five and let's take a look um, not quite bright enough for me let's go ahead and set that to 10 and I per personally like to set the background to solid black when I'm working on this stuff and then to get nice um, studio style reflections I usually add a sphere around the scene and make it white which it already is practically white and that will give us cool -er reflections once we get to that area so then we can split this so we can have something constantly rendering and we can up our light to maybe 24 and that's looking pretty cool so we can take our tire and make it first of all reflective so let's go ahead and go over here to our node editor now we're getting into the blender stuff that isn't Photoshop exclusive we're gonna create a new material and rubber is generally pretty dark I'm switching this to GPU now that we have lower subdivisions for preview that is totally acceptable so we can add a shader mix shader and a shader a glossy and that will give us a cool glossy material on our tire but no tire is that shiny so let's set this up to 0.4 to make it look like a nice rubber reflection then we can change our diffuse color down until it is a bit darker to look more like a tire I think we can probably even pump the roughness up to 0.5 to make it really look more like rubber this is like a brand new tire and we're about to fix that so the cool thing about our texture layout is first of all let's go ahead and focus on the bump and it looks like if you look at a tire I'm actually gonna pause and look for a reference image of the side of a tire okay so looking at the side of this tire it looks like we have a sharper transition right here so I'm gonna go ahead and update our model just by adding a few extra edge loops and then deleting these once we have it um, a bit tighter right here so now we have this nice ridge and we can do the exact same thing on the opposite side um, so we can go ahead and turn off rendering since we're going back to modeling a little bit um, go to perspective mode hide our ground plane and our sphere and then it looked like it was this one right here and delete edge loop and that will tighten it up without screwing up our UVs um, because edge loops when you add them will add in the UVs over here but they don't slide when you slide them so if you slide them when you create your edge loop it will mess up your UVs so what I tend to do is create a bunch of edge loops and then delete them respectively until I get the tight edges that I want which is a totally cool way of doing it it's how all the cool kids do it then we are going to go into our textures and let's go ahead and just work on the bump as you can see text tires tend to have these ridges right here and they tend to have text on them so we're gonna create a fairly um, we're not gonna go into detail and create all this tiny text but we're gonna make a bump map for our text so we can turn off our displacement create a new layer right here turn on our wireframe and create a 
50% gray. It's good to work from 50% because that acts as a mid-level so you can go both up and down if you're in your bump map. If you start with black, you can only go up. If you start with white, you can only go down. So starting at the mid-level is very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another layer right here and we're gonna create some text. And we're going to call these Folia Tires, pretending that I own a tire company. And I like it, everything in caps for stuff like this. So we're gonna create this in complete caps. Um, we'll select our text and we'll make it bold italic, like real tires. And then I will move it right here like so, scale it nice and up like that. Probably a little bit like that too. Make a nice stretched logo, make it look like somebody made these that knows nothing about design. And then we can duplicate this a couple times. So I'm thinking just a few times should be pretty good. Um, we'll scale this up just a little bit more, hit Control J, and maybe have it twice on there. And we can sort of even this out a little bit like so, and that should look pretty good. Then we can take this, duplicate it, move it over, control T, or um, control T and rotate it 180 degrees, like so, and then just move it over until it matches up with the wireframe of the other side. Because we want our tires to be fairly even, even though nobody is gonna see one of these sides. I'm not sure which side they're not going to see, but that is uh, an issue for another day. And then we'll call this tire underscore bump. Okay, and that will give us a nice bump map for text. We can add these ridges after we figure out where the text is, and we can say input texture coordinate, texture, image texture. I don't know why I put the image coordinate. It is UV by default, but it is good practice just to use image coordinates. We're gonna go to textures and grab our bump map and go back to rendered mode to see what our bump is looking like. And looky here, we have some Folia tires. This is my tire company. I have a pretty good southern accent, I guess since I grew up in southern Georgia, or north Georgia, but lots of southern people around here. Um, this bump map is a little bit intense, we don't want it to be that intense, so we're going to create a converter color ramp, and we're just going to crush this down a little bit. Maybe a lot. Until the bump map looks more natural. When you have a bump map that doesn't look very natural, it's probably too intense. So that is creating some nice text there for us. And it is a little bit distorted, so I think we can probably scale it out a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and create these lines for our tire. We can probably also um, go ahead and take the entirety of this whole thing. A good way to select circles like this is to go to circle select. Then we can scale this in a little bit, I think. Um, just because I think tire rims are going to be a little bit smaller. And that will distort our text a good bit. So what we're going to do, since our text is distorted, is just scale it out. And let's look at this percentage. It's uh, Let's just go with 140. That seems pretty good. Um, we want an exact increment because we want all of our text to be identical. So 140, Control T, 140, Control T, 140. Again, hotkeys are going to be different, um, varying from GIMP to Photoshop, but I'm sure you GIMP users know how to do all of this in GIMP. I, and this is also an old version of Photoshop. You might have a much more recent version like CC. This is still CS4, which is ancient in terms of image editing software. Um, and then I think uh, before we actually test this, let's go ahead and add the ridges up top. And how we're going to do that is, again, just create some lines. So I'm going to zoom out until we can see the entire document, put our brush down quite a good bit, probably down to about five pixels. Um, we're going to draw a white line down like that. Then we can come in close and sort of line these lines up, hit Control J to duplicate it, make another one like so. Then we can take both of these and duplicate them and drag them over. Like so. And that should create some pretty decent lines. So let's go ahead and um, 
Let's blur these a little bit. First, we're going to merge them, um, duplicate them just in case I don't like the blurring that happens, and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we'll blur them by maybe two pixels each just to get a nice bump. Um, and as you can see, um, having 4096 by 4096 is still not perfect um, resolution wise. I think we'll also take the text and blur it just a little bit to get a nicer specular highlight. So we can rasterize the type and merge these layers, turn these ones off, and hit Control F to blur it by two pixels as well. Two seems like a lot, so we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set it down to one just to get a little bit of a smoother transition on our text. Control Shift S, JPEG, and we're going to save over our tire bump. I know that this is a lot of stuff that I'm saying. Um, if we refresh our cycles, we should now see the updated textures, which are looking pretty good. Our folio attires is still quite distorted, um, which is no good. But that is a UV map issue. So what we can do then to undistort it is to scale it down on the Y. This won't even affect our tread because this happens way before our tread. Um, but if we, s oh wow, what is happening there? <laughs> oh wow, that is giving us some distorted results. We, uh, I thought if we scaled this down, it would look pretty decent. Um, let's open the image and see what's happening here. So we can open our bump. select all of these edges. We'll hit O to turn on proportional editing and scale it down until it's not affecting our tread. And we probably also want to change uh, smooth was what I was going to go with. I don't know why that is distorting the text quite so much. Maybe this actually needs to be scaled up. Ah, there we go. We don't want to go too far. But if we scale this up, it looks like it will undistort our text a good bit. It only undistorts one of them, though. Okay, so the text, I think, um, we can just uh, scale it down so it doesn't distort quite as much. And that is going to be our solution for the meantime. So we're going to turn this off. This is why I kept these layers right here. Um, we're going to scale our text down to B about 70 by 70% 70 of what it was. And that will make it look less distorted on our tire. We would have to have perfect UVs somehow um, to get perfect bump maps. And one way that you could do that is to cut seams um, along these edges right here and then make uh, rounded UVs, I guess, and make the text follow that. Um, but this will work for our purposes, I believe. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this looks actually. Let's not um, mess with the text. I'll let you all mess with it to make it better, but we're uh, already going pretty long into this video. Yeah, we're already 30 minute, 38 minutes into this video, so I'm just going to continue to work on this. Um, and I think we can also up our bump a little bit more, maybe 0 0.05, make it a bit more raised. And then let's go ahead and take a look at our example tire again and see what other kinds of bump stuff is on there and it looks like they have more text so we can add more text between the folio tires great x bridgestone okay um we could also even turn off we can also even add some bump right here on in on the inside of the text to make it look kind of cool um so let's go ahead and Okay, that is that. So to get that, we can select our text and go to Select, Modify, Contract by, let's say, 5 pixels should give us pretty good. Um, then we can create a new layer, uh, fill it in with white. So now, okay, there we go. Um, and then their pattern, they actually have a pattern in there, like a grid of sorts. Um, but what we're going to do is just create some filter, noise, add noise, and we'll just create some Gaussian noise in there. 
and that should give us some interesting texture. Let's go ahead and also um, hit Control M to go into curves. Control M, why is it not going? I don't know. Image adjustment curves, but regardless, Control M is the hotkey, and we can just darken this down a little bit to make it a little bit lower from what it was. Then we can hit Control Shift S, save as a JPEG, tire bump. So hopefully this video gives you a good idea of the process that I generally go through when I'm texturing stuff that isn't procedural. We're also going to use some procedural textures here, um, but that gives us some interesting text effects. Their text is much thicker and they have a cooler font than we do, but I'll let you all use whatever font you want. So we also probably want to add um, some ridges right along the base of the text, and we also want to add a little bit of detail text. So let's go ahead and do that. We can take our ridges, which is this right here. Um, it's already merged, so I'm going to select this side. Hit Control J, that duplicates your selection only. And we can move it to the base of the tire. So right here, and then we can take it and scale it down on the width by maybe 50% to get some nice lines there and we'll duplicate that and drag it over to this side like so and that will give us some decent lines so then we can go ahead and add some text in between ooh this scaled down for some reason um, so we need to scale these up to the edges Okay, well let's go ahead and create some in-between text just to add some more detail. And let's also go ahead and shove this in its own folder and call it bump before we forget. It's also a really good habit to name your layers. I choose not to for the meantime because again I am lazy. Um, but let's create some text. Most awesome tires in universe, universe land. Let's pretend that they're in a place called Universe Land, and that is fine by me. So we can take this text and scale it down like so um, to get just some nice detailed text that we can move closer to the baseline. We can drag this over here, rotate it, and that should be pretty cool. So then let's go ahead and use that as our bump map. Saving. Let's sing a song about saving, because saving's pretty important. Alright, and that gives us some nice detail text around the tire. We can do the exact same thing on the other side, but we're going to have to match it up so it tiles properly. And a good way to avoid that is just to drag this down and split it on one of the words. So we'll split it on tires. Um, and then we will drag it up like so and put the text that is before tires and that will continue to make it tileable and we can just take these two most recent ones um, control T rotate 180 and move it over we can zoom in to move it exactly where we want it, like so, and that should be pretty good. So, ah oh man, we need to match these up again, okay. I'm not actually sure where I split it down here, so tires in universe land. Okay, and that'll look pretty decent for our bump map. So now a lot of the rest of this is going to be procedural texturing, which is quite all right. And that will give us some nice text on each side, which doesn't match up perfectly, um, but I'm all right with that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and dirty up our tire. So our color is, or first of all, we're going to need to create a spec map so our tire isn't perfectly shiny. We can do that using some noise. So we'll go texture and noise texture, 
and we'll plug the factor right here and that will give us some nice variation but not quite what I'm looking for. So we can say input texture coordinates object and that'll give us some nice smaller noise and then we can up the detail to seven or so and then we can sort of uh, mess with this like let's say eight for the scale. That'll give us some nice good variation on our spec map and let's go ahead and take a look at our pile of tires here. So you notice that these are like barely reflective at all. Um, so what we want to do is create a color ramp to modify the map that we have and then we can sort of brighten this up to make it a little bit more subtle and we can darken this down again to make it a little bit more subtle. Then we can also um, add some nice splotchiness so we can actually make another color ramp that we can plug into the color or diffuse channel so we can plug this factor right here and this way our dirt will match up with the specular um, plug this right here into the color channel and we'll say that this is going to be our dark gray tire color and this is going to be our brown and then we can sort of make it higher contrast a little bit And that gives us uh, it gives us something. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like rendered. We aren't going to be able to use GPU because we're going to run out of memory unless you have the fanciest GPU in the world. Um, but I am going to go ahead and see what this looks like rendered. Uh, I think we can get away with five. Let's try it, especially from a distance. Six may be up super close. And this is going to take a while because of, again, okay, so now this is looking like a tire for shows, for the show, for sure. I think we can even take our specular and make it wider um, because these look pretty dull. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Leave this guy rendering. Um, come over here and turn the roughness up to... 0.6, maybe 0.55, and we can probably change the noise scale to about 6, and then we can brighten this up, and then we can also add some other colors in here, like you'll notice there, we, we can even just sample these from the tires here. Um, so we can get some nice color variation in our noise. Uh, which is not looking too hot. Let's go ahead and color shader diffuse and let's just plug this into the color just to get solid diffuse and see what our texture is looking like. Okay, um, the reason that this wasn't showing up so much over here was because of our reflection taking over a lot of the material. So we can probably take this and turn it down a good bit. Um, let's go ahead and plug this shader back in and let's go ahead and turn our reflection down to maybe like 0.5 max and then 0 0.05 min. Okay, and we're probably going to want to paint some maps for our dirt just to get something that looks nice. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to pause and look for some cool textures on CG Textures. Okay, so I decided I'm not going to go to CG Textures for this. We're just going to sort of wing it in Photoshop. Um, we're going to change our displacement map to add some dirt in the crevices. And how we do that is go into our displacement right here and we can select all of our tread or we can even yeah we can select all of our lines um, merge them then hit control M god why isn't control M working oh well I'll just go to the menu like a sad boy and we can make everything white oh we don't even need to do that um, oh no I do not want to delete that layer I wanted to create a new layer that is white 
and we can actually do to do, do okay so now we have a copy of everything and we want to take our gray lines and make them white so image adjustments curves or control M if yours is working mine is not so image adjustments curves this is the slow way to do it but I'm so bored with being slow um, then we can take all of this and merge um, right click merge layers to get one layer then we can create another layer below make it white and this gives us a nice mask we can merge these two layers and hit control I to invert them see that hotkey worked whatever Photoshop then we can create a new layer hit control A control C our group not layer make a new mask alt click that control V to paste it in and then this will be our dirt so what we're gonna do for the dirt is create a new layer fill it in and say filter noise add noise and what we can do now since there is no fractal noise plugin for Photoshop and the clouds are not that great we can come over here select a small square of it hit control T and scale it up all the way to the document and that'll just give us some nice uh, variation that we can say filter blur Gaussian blur like so that'll give us some nice wide variation for our displacement and we can say filter noise um, add noise to add some noise to that not quite so much we, because we still want the wide variation uh, then we can say filter blur Gaussian blur to blur that out just a little bit and that'll give us a nice um, dirt to our displacement and we can take this and darken it not make it totally black but um, if we go to image adjustment curves, since mine is not working, uh, we can make this a bit darker, like our previous tread was black, and that goes in about right. So we just want some caked in dirt, like so. Um, I think that should work pretty well. Um, we can probably up the contrast a good bit, and then we can hit Control Shift S and save this as displacement again. Then we can probably also um, add some noise over the entire thing just to get some fancier displacement, but we're not going to mess with that for now. Um, and let's go ahead and go to our textures and go to our displacement texture and we'll reload that. And that is nice and reloaded, so let's do a test render. Do to do, do 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 do, waiting for the render. It is going. Okay, and it's hard to see at such a low resolution, but that'll give us some nice variation in the crevices here for when we add some dirt. So let's go ahead and um, make a color map. We'll call this, you guessed it, color, like so. Then we can add our new layer that we just created under the color. And we can add, we can actually duplicate this group like so and move it right here. So this is what our color map is looking like right now. And we can go ahead and make this a dark gray like we want our tire to be. Um, we're just going to make our own color map. We can mix in some variation procedurally in Blender later, but making your own color map is just easier in general. So you can go to Image, Adjustments, Gradient Map, and let's make a nice mixture of browns. That's a bit bright for my taste. So let's just um, create some nice dark dirt. That's a little bit yellow, I think. Um, we can probably move that closer to the red um, and that will give us some nice dirt um, probably a little bit too saturated but let's go ahead and make something that's like super saturated then we can desaturate it later so this gives us some nice dirt that is caked in the crevices and let's go ahead and do uh, control U for hue saturation and we'll desaturate this a good bit, like so. And we can mess with the brightness and stuff later as well. Um, then we're also just going to use some brushes to paint in some dirt. Um, 
So create a new layer, take it out of that group, but still in the color group. And you'll notice that there's just, um, in Blender, there's just a, and in, in, if we go back to Blender, you'll see there's just a lot of color variation on these tires. So we can sort of create some dirt of our own. So let's go ahead and create a nice big brush. And let's make it one of these randomish ones. And then we can just uh, take a nice dirt color, like so. And we can um, set the opacity to maybe 20%, make this a lot bigger, and just sort of um, go into our brush settings by hitting F5. And then we can say brush di shape dynamics, we can change the size jitter, we can change the scattering, or that's the diameter, no, angle jitter. So now if we just uh, brush some random stuff here, let's actually set the opacity down to one and just get some nice uh, dirt added onto our tire. Get some nice good variation. on our tread. It wouldn't be likely for this much dirt to be on the sides of the tire because that never hits the road. Um, we can also just change the spacing up like so and just sort of drag the brush around to get some nice dirt around on our thing. We can also switch up our brush, um, do the exact same thing to change the size and spacing of that and make it a bit bigger and just uh, drag it around to get some nice uh, dirt variation. We can change the levels of this later, um, but this is going to give us some nice dirt here on the tread where the tire is on the road most. All right, so now that should be pretty interesting. Um, let's go ahead and mess with the contrast of this. So image adjustment curves, uh, we can mess with the contrast a little bit. Um, maybe turn down the opacity and go ahead and say control shift s jpeg and we'll call this tire underscore color color <laughs> it's like a fancy alcoholic beverage and then we can take that and continue our test render and we can plug that texture so texture image texture we can plug that into the color and open textures color and that will give us our, supposed to give us our tread. <laughs> Did I save it? Control Shift S. Oh, let, let's plug it into just, oh, I plugged it into the wrong shader, that's why. Okay, we wanna plug it in right here. And that'll give us some nice dirt in our tread. Um, then we can also take our mask that we made, and that looks like this. Control A, Control C. Alt clicking a mask will take you into the mask, by the way. Um, then clicking on a different layer will take you out. We can minimize all of these, hit Control V to paste it, Control I to invert it, and then we can just say JPEG, and we can call this tire underscore spec mask. Then we can say that there will be no specular highlight within the tread. So let's do that by taking our factor for our reflection right here, uh, image texture, we'll open up our spec mask, we'll do a color mix RGB, and then I'll take this and put it right here and multiply it over. And that will say there is no specular for you. Um, we can also probably just take the color of our tire and make it brighter overall. Um, also, this noise is a little bit high contrast um, for us, for our specular. So I think we can also just take this noise, scale it down to maybe four, um, just to lower the variation, just give us some variation, maybe up this to 12 for detail. But we just want some variation, not like super high frequency noise or else it'll look way too CG. Um, then we can take this, um, we can make U black, make U black, and then we can mix our image texture with our procedural noise. We can say screen by a factor of one. And we can probably make this a bit wider. 
and the wider we make this the more dirt we'll have so we actually want to turn that down probably want to take the saturation out of this just get some nice fade then we can take this noise and duplicate it uh, we can probably also screen this by less we can up this amount then we can lower this to like 0.6 just to turn our dirt down. Um, then we can take these two colors, add another screen, um, take our other noise texture, do a vector mapping, vector mapping. Um, we can offset it by some random amount um, and change this to maybe five. Uh, take another color ramp that's similar to this one, but different color just because you notice there's lots of different colors on that tire So we can take this one and make it maybe more red Maybe even go drastic here Pinkish um, and we can screen that over too Probably make this one a bit higher contrast Then I think we can take the glossiness and change it up some. So let's put this at 0.7. What you can also do is use some noise to mix two textures, uh, one which will have a rougher glossy and which will have sharper, and then use the sharper one where the noise is. I'm not going to go into that too much right now, but it looks like we can take our color and brighten up this noise just a little bit. So image adjustments, curves, take you, brighten you up just a little bit, um, and save you out as a JPEG. Okay, so re-render that. That gives us some nice dirt there. Um, and then on our displacement map, we can also go ahead and mess up our tread a little bit um, just to make it look like it's a worn down tire. And how we can do that is add a new layer. We can take one of, or um, even right here, we can take one of our brushes that we made, scale it way down and just add some variation. Uh, but we want to first change the opacity to 100. So we can just add some nice variation around here. Um, before I do this, I think it would be wise to make a duplicate just so I don't screw anything up. Although I'm pretty sure it'll look way better. And adding small details like this is what really sells your work. Um, so we really just want some nice wear and tear on these tires. Let's say that this whole tread was like ripped off partially. Um, we can just really bump this up a good bit. We really just want to wear down the edges a little bit, um, make it look nice and bumpy. We can do that on lots of these treads, like so. This might even be a little bit drastic, but hey, we're just experimenting here and having a good time making a tire in Blender. Alrighty. And this is, again, like the super benefit of using displacement maps to make your tread. You can just modify them on the go. And even if we wanted to make completely different tread right now, we have the freedom to do that. If we had modeled our tread, it would be set in stone unless we wanted to spend hours modifying it. But this would be pretty easy to just update. Okay, so um, uh, this is a little more time consuming than I thought it would be. So I'm actually going to pause the video and bump this up a little bit more just to save you all some time. Okay, so I went ahead and added a good amount of bumpiness and variation to the displacement map, and let's go ahead and take that into Blender and see what it looks like. So I'm going to save this out as a JPEG displacement. 
and we're going to take that into Blender and let's go ahead and save and do a test render. Do 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 render in the tire now. This is going to take just a little bit longer, so I'll sit here and talk to you. Um, this is a little bit more involved than you thought it would be, isn't it? Okay, so that dirt, first thing I notice, is a little bit strong. Um, but that's quite all right. As you can see, I'm actually going to up the samples here just a little bit um, to maybe 100. Just so we can see our... Uh, just so we can see it with a little bit less noise in cycles and that will start here in just a second just to show you a good idea of the weathering that was done to the tire so as you can see uh, now our now our displacement map has some good weather detail on it I'll let you all mess with yours a lot more than I messed with mine. I did mine super quick. Normally you would spend a lot of good time on this just to make sure it looks pretty good. Um, we can probably uh, definitely take the dirt and tone it down on the color map. And a good way to do that without actually modifying our texture is to, ah, oh, screw it. We're just gonna modify the texture. I was gonna say we could mix it with a color in Blender, but it's a lot more efficient just to modify the texture. So we can take this guy and turn him down to maybe 70%, maybe 40% opacity, and that will be it. That's a lot easier than doing some node magic in Blender. And I'm even gonna turn it down a little bit more, maybe to 30%, maybe 25%. Um, you can change the opacity of a layer in Photoshop just by typing in numbers um, when you have that layer selected and the pointer selected, which is super convenient. Uh, let's go ahead back to Blender and see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, so now the dirt caked up here is not nearly as drastic. And I'm also going to go ahead and put this to 4 just for test purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and deepen our displacement, maybe 0 0.07, just to get some deeper tread. Because as you saw in our render, it's not horribly deep. Um, then I think we can go ahead and add just a little bit of bump to our texture. Uh, let's go ahead and put this back down to 2 for testing. And since we're at 2 now, we can go back to GPU compute. And let's just add a little bit of noise to our texture. So noise, just a color mix. We'll, um, we'll screen it over. Uh, input texture coordinate UV. If it would stop lagging, you let me select it. Oh, we don't want UV, we want object. My bad. Okay, then we can up this to maybe 12 to get some higher frequency noise, up the detail to maybe 6 to get some higher frequency noise. Um, then we can take the entirety of that and screen it over by maybe a factor of 0.1 or less. That'll just give us a little bit more variation on our tire before we call it quits. Then for our reflection, we can finally take one more thing. We can say input layer weight, uh, color mix RGB, facing and we can multiply that over which I believe that's the correct way to do it um, let's take a look at what this would look like just as diffuse okay yeah black on the center so we're multiplying in the center so it will be not reflective at all right here which is totally cool let's swap our shaders back out I usually keep one plugged into the volume slot um, just to sort of you know, um, to just so I can swap between test shaders and the actual shader very easily. And I think we can up the reflection around the edges even more. Um, so we can take you. This is multiplying with our image. Okay, that makes sense. We can take you, put you up to one. 
take you, put you up, just so it's more reflective around the edges, I think. Then we can take our layer weight, make a color ramp for that, and change the black up a good bit. Which um, I just realized is not being plugged into here. Okay, so if we mess with that, now it'll be more reflective around areas that we're not directly facing on the camera. That's called a Fresnel effect. Whew. Wow, this is quite complicated. Um, then I think we can even take our glossy and change it back down to 0.4. Maybe back up to 0.4. Or five or point five and let's go ahead and render this out after we tweak our lights so I'm going to make this lighting much brighter let's say 40 that'll give us some nice specular highlights this texturing is obviously not perfect these are much rougher uh, much less specular I think we can probably take this and tone it back down um, a good way to take what we have if we like the contrast of it, which I currently do not. We can take this to point maybe 2.5. Um, a good way to mess with this is just to say color RGB curves, and then we can make it darker to tone down our specular. Maybe add more noise to the color map, whatever. I'll let you all modify your tire. The main point of this tutorial, though, is to show off what you can get away with with just some cool displacement maps to make some tire tread. Uh, that's what I really wanted to show off. The texturing was sort of a bonus that took longer than expected. Um, but let's go ahead and work on our lighting a bit more. I'm going to scale this guy out. Um, we'll make you... Let's make it a little higher contrast by scaling this out some more. Uh, which makes the reflection bounces not go quite as far and gives us some nice darker shadows. Uh, let's up this to about 60. And a good way to also get less bounce, um, if we really want to make this higher contrast image, uh, we can do a neat trick on the light, which I will show you right now. If we have our light, our material, we can do shader, mix, shader, or input, Oh, shader, uh, diffuse, make you black. Then we can say input geometry, and we can do um, back facing for the factor, which will make our light one-sided. Um, right now, we have the wrong side, so we can do color invert to get the right side. And we can go back to our camera and take a look at that. And I think the bump might be a little bit A big and B intense, so we'll put that down to 10 and mix it by 0 0.07 or 0 0.06. And that looks interesting. Um, we could definitely tweak the spec a lot more, definitely add more dirt to the tire. Whatever, I will let you all handle that. Um, for the final render, I'm going to set this to probably 600 samples, and I'm going to turn off caustics and turn filter up to two. Um, and I guess that will conclude our tire, our tire tutorial. Hopefully you learned something interesting about a good way to make tire tread. Of course, the textures aren't absolutely perfect. They aren't expected to be in just an hour's time. Um, good images take time guys that's just all there is to it you can watch these tutorials learn how to do stuff quickly but the best way to make an image look great is to just spend some good time on it I think our tires proportions are also a bit strange so we can take this and scale it on everything except the Z to make it look a little bit skinnier then uh, zoom out just a little bit like so maybe get some good composition going here have the shadow go that way, then we could take our light and move it out to get our shadow to be a little bit longer. And we could also add a rim light by taking this guy back here and moving him down. And making him, let's make a golden rim light. 
Wow, you're, you guys are even getting some lighting uh, stuff in this tutorial. And I think that we can take him and turn him down to maybe 40, just to make his shadow a little less intense. And I think that'll look like a pretty decent tire. Um, so hopefully all you all learned something in this tutorial, and I'm going to call it quits right there. I might add a rim to mine. You all can add a rim to yours. It's pretty easy to just do some basic modeling and make a chrome shader. Um, I probably won't add a rim before I post this just because it's already 9 o'clock and I'm running out of time to get it posted in time. But again, hopefully you learned something interesting about the displacement modifier, how to use it properly, and um, it's really cool how you can, for instance, uh, preview with no displacement and then render with the displacement, just like how it would work in Maya or V-Ray or Mental Ray or whatever rendering engine you would normally use. You don't see the displacement in the viewport. That's actually a really cool feature that Blender has, being able to view it in the viewport. But anyway, uh, subscribe for a new tutorial every Tuesday, and I will see you all next week.